Executive orders have always been a special privilege of U.S. presidents. Jean Meserve takes a look at their history. I'd like now to sign these directives. The power of the pen is greatest when the pen is in the hand of a president. Only days into his presidency, Bill Clinton has, with a few strokes, instituted new policies on abortion, fetal tissue research, and ethics. Many times a president will unleash a barrage of executive orders just after he takes office in order to show the executive branch that someone new is in charge and also to telegraph to the country that someone has come into office with very different views. I, Jimmy, Carter, do so. Jimmy Carter, for example, issued an executive order just after his inauguration, granting amnesty to Vietnam draft evaders. Franklin Roosevelt closed banks to prevent a collapse of the banking system. A president can take unilateral action as commander-in-chief and head of the executive branch in the form of an executive order, a memorandum, a directive, or a proclamation. These are often symbolic, but sometimes profound in their effect. Perhaps the most famous such document was Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. Truman used executive order to break the color barrier in the armed forces. Although Clinton promised to sign one to end the exclusion of gays from the military, he appears to be taking less direct action for now. A president's power to do these things is not spelled out in the Constitution and sometimes creates conflict with the courts and especially Congress, which is anxious to preserve its own lawmaking prerogatives. What we have in effect, of course, is like uh, the old uh, push me, pull you in the Dr. Doolittle stories. The Congress uh, is pushing against the president, each one trying to get as much power. Thus far, Bill Clinton has used his pen to give his presidency definition and momentum. Someone he might keep in mind only. that Kennedy, Johnson, Roosevelt, oil. Lincoln, the presidents who used their executive powers most aggressively, are among those most remembered by history. Jean Meserve for CNN, Washington.